Amen. It's official. We're here. Yeah, I thank God today for His mercy. I thank Him for His grace. I thank Him for His loving kindness. I thank Him because <clears throat> He knows not only my today and my yesterday, but He knows my tomorrow. He knows exactly what it's going to take for me to get through tomorrow. And I'm just so very glad that I know who to call on in my time of trouble and in my time of need. And as the brother stood up here today and I listened to the different people request prayer, we are in a very troubled, troubled time. We are in a very troubled time. On every hand, everywhere you look, there is trouble. Yes, sir. But thank God we have a Savior. Thank God we have a Savior. It doesn't matter what trouble comes our way. It doesn't matter what looks like around you. It doesn't matter what it seems like. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what <coughs> this one says or that one says. You know what matters? We have a Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you. have a Savior, and His name is Jesus name. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's not in me, and it's not in my ability. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's not in my ability, Hallelujah. but it's all in Him. All in him. It's all in Him. Absolutely. And you know, I don't stand today because of my strength. Mm -mm. I stand today because of His strength. Hallelujah. I'm not able to get up every morning and go on another day <clears throat> and do a job because of me. It's because of Him right. and what He's capable right. of doing. Amen. If you could all lift your hands today and give Him oh, honor and so glory. So truly, so truly, so He deserves so honor and glory. I praise you, mighty God, for mercy and grace and goodness. I praise you, Lord, because I know that your word is true. Your word said, take no thought of tomorrow, because you know what we have in here. Your word said, take no thought of what you shall speak, because open our mouths and you will fill it. Truly, Lord, I thank you and I praise you because I know it's not in me, it's not in us, it's not in any, but it's all in you. It is all in you, Lord. Oh, I just thank you today, and I praise you, Lord, and I ask that you would anoint the word as it goes forth, Lord God. Anoint the word as it goes forth, Lord God. Give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. Write this word upon the tables of our heart, Lord God. Give us wisdom and understanding, Lord God. Far above all things, give us understanding of your word, Lord God, because that is what will sustain us in the day of trouble. Truly, I thank you today, and I praise you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah, Come unto me, come unto me, you who are heavy laden. Come unto me, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, come unto me, and I will give you rest. You will give rest to the weary, not the rest of the world. 
not the peace of the world, but his peace, his rest. Come unto me, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. First of all, I want to thank the Lord that we're here today because the needs of the saints are many, and I see yes. that. And, and I pray for all of you. You're all so very important to me. This is our home, our family. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the enemy would have been attacked in every area that you can imagine in our home and in our lives. And it's by the grace of God that I've been able to take, you know what, one step today. Yes, amen. One step. Amen. 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 And it's by all your prayers. And I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for this home and everything here. And I just pray to the Lord that He'll let me take another step. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yamaha siya yakamai, ya yakamahayari yama sadia mai, ya kariyara ramai, ya ya kamariyara ramai, kareo yama si kurunoma, ya kuruma siya rama, ya ya kayama siya kama, ya 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 ha ha kuriyamata, komoti yama, ya makasiya yamatai. Ye, ye, Gordia Maha. Oh, see me, Kariyama. Ye, ma. Oh, see me. Mm. Oh, how much. I didn't know that. And my people will look up. Holy, I say, look up. Holy, holy. Look up, my people. Look up. Haramahai. I know the path that thou takest, and I know the trouble thou hast had, and I know the things that thou art going through, and I am with thee, uh, even in trouble, even in a time of trouble. I am with thee, and behold, I shall never leave thee, and never forsake thee. Just uh, look unto me, and trust, and believe, and know that I am God, and beside me there is no Savior. Just look unto me, look unto me, for I, I know thee, and I know the way thou takest. I know thy struggles, and I am with thee. And I have blessed thee, and I will bless thee. And I will continue to hold thee up as long as thou lookest unto me. Ha ha. She go ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I do know. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. Amen. I know that. There's three areas Satan really loves to attack in, and that's the family, your finances, and our health. And he's really, really, really attacking families now because he knows his time's limited, and he's trying to tear us under the, the Christian families, it seems like, more than any, any other. Uh -huh. And we have to stand. Yes, yeah, we do. Oh, yes. We have to yes. stand. You know, you will, you will be yoked. You will be yoked one way or another. You will be yoked with Jesus Christ, yes. yes, and He will lead you and guide you, or you will be yoked to the world. Yeah, and His yoke is easy. His yoke is easy, and His burden is light. If you turn <coughs> to Him and trust in Him, He will lead you and guide you. I've heard Brother Pat say many times, you know, you put a yoke on an oxen, He doesn't like it. He does not like it. But you know what? It sends Him down the straight path. When, when, when you when you're when you're plowing a field, you want those lines to be straight. Yeah. You don't want your line. You don't want your 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 plants to look like this. It's a straight shot. And when you put a yoke on oxen, they work together. And in working together, they will plow that row. They will plow that row exactly how it's supposed to. You yoke yourself to the world, and you will be all over the place. Shoot up, spit out. You will be all over the place. He wants to give his people peace today. He wants you to know and understand. He has a peace not like the world gives. Right. It's not like the world gives. Because I want you to know the world will give you temporary rest and temporary peace. It will give you an answer, not a true answer, but it will give you an answer that makes you feel good for a day. Uh -huh. And before you turn around, you're falling on your face. 
But if you trust in God, if you just trust in Him, believe in Him, He will give you the answers that you need. Yes, He will. It says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. You don't see faith. <coughs> faith is not seen. I can stand up here all day long and tell you I have faith. You know how you're going to know I have faith? By what you see me do. I can say I have faith that when I walk back there and turn on that switch, the light's going to come on. But if I stand back here and say, come on, light, turn on. Turn on, light. Here, come on. I, I know you can do it. There's electricity running through those wires. I know that all I have to do is flip that switch and that light's going to come on. But guess what it's up to me to do? Gotta I gotta get up and flip the switch. Gotta flip the switch. We gotta flip the switch. <laughs> Jesus wants to work in our lives. He wants to work in our lives. But we cannot sit back and say, flip the switch, God. Flip the switch. Flip the switch, God. We know that you're connected. We know the connection's there. We know it's right there. We know we, we've seen it happen before. You have to be able to get up and flip the switch. Now, understand, the, elect the light's coming on because of the electricity and who it's connected to. Mm -hmm. He is our connection. He is our true connection. Yes, yes. But you've got to be willing to get up and flip the switch. Yeah. Um, I, I can only talk through my own personal experiences. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, I've had some physical problems going on lately. It's been really hard for me to deal with. Uh -huh. And I feel like a big baby. I really do feel like a big baby. And I whine and complain about it. And then I hear God say, stop whining and complaining and do something about it. And, you know, and then you stand up for a few seconds. It's like, by his stripes, I know I can do this. I know it. You know, and you stand and, and you confess your strength. And you, can, you confess that God is a healer. And you confess that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You stand and you confess and you walk in it, and in the next little pain you get, you're sitting on the couch covered up with the cover going, Oh, God, <laughs> I can't stand this anymore. And then the enemy comes in and he says, You're such a failure. You're such a failure. You're such a failure. You're such a failure. Ah, oh, where's your faith now? Where's your faith now? And then you get up and you just press on and you... Well, I hate to tell you this, but that's called humanity. It is. <laughs> It's called humanity. Now, what God wants is for those pity parties to get farther and farther and farther apart to where we can Amen. stand. And, you know, we don't have to see something to believe that it's going to happen. If you have to see it to believe it, it's not faith. It's not faith. If you have to see it to believe it, it's not faith. Now, we draw on things that we see. Brother Pat draws on things from his past that he's seen. He knows that God's a healer because when he put the man down in the water and came up and he picked up his wheelchair and drove away, he knows for a fact God is a healer. Absolutely. He has saw it with his own eyes. Absolutely. I personally know God is a healer because I seen my six-year-old child leave a church service wearing glasses as thick as Coke bottles because she couldn't see. And these were bifocals on a six-year-old child. She may have been seven at the time. And when we came out of church, she said, I can't see out of these glasses, Mom. And we threw the glasses away. And several years later, when she went back to the doctor, he said, there's no sign this child's ever had any eye problems. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. I've seen it with my own eyes. I know what God is capable of doing. Absolutely. I've seen Brother Charlie Hatley so sick that he couldn't lift up his head. And we literally thought he was going to die. Yeah. And saints, his mom would come, I'm telling you, Sister Mary would come and she would sit and she would pray and she would rebuke the devil. And, it, and I don't mean she came in and said, okay, be healed. She got down on her knees. She got in the spirit of travail. She got down and she met God. She met God. She said, listen, this is my son. You told me that, the, that, the, that it wasn't just to me, but it was to my children and my children's children. And he alone has a covenant with you, God, that by your stripes he's him. And she just, I mean, she would not give up bulldog tenacity. Yeah. She got a hold of this and yeah. was not letting go. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've seen with my own eyes, within the hour, the pain would start to recede. 
And she, he would get up and he would say, I'm feeling better, Mom. I think I can eat something. And he would start eating something. And within a few hours, we were all sitting around having a conversation. This was a man who was having a headache so bad, all he could do is throw up. Yeah. He couldn't even hold his... I've seen him just hang his head because he couldn't even lift up his head because yes. the pain was so, so severe. Great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, have to. I've seen too. I have spoke with Sister Julie when Tara was sick. And I remember the time that, and I'm saying this because we read things of the Bible yeah, we do. in the Old Testament. Okay, we read that Enoch was translated. We read that, that Abel had a better report. We read Old Testament. These are things that were done. Those are wonderful things. These are true, honest things. But we can pull from today, right now. Right now. This isn't things that just happened then. Come on. And it's done and over with. We have to pull with what we have seen with our own eyes. Sister Georgiana has given the testimony about her daughter and how they said, there's no hope. There's no hope. This child's going to die. And she said, no, she's not. And they said, that's nice. That's nice. It's okay, but uh, we're doctors that we know. We have an understanding. We know she's going to die. Well, guess what? She's not dead. She's not dead. Nope. She just walked through the door just a few minutes ago. That's right. She's not dead. Do you understand? You can pull from the things that happened today. I was reading. I've got to get rid of this sweater. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm burning up here. <laughs> I can't get rid of this one, we're all being trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you understand, we can pull from things. Put it on, put we it can pull. <laughs> <laughs> you never see the thing. My eyes! My eyes! <laughs> oh, yeah. A little laughter doeth good like a man. <laughs> laughter doeth good like a man. Absolutely. Yeah. Not being obscene here, but laughter do is good like yeah, medicine, yeah, okay? Absolutely. But do you understand, we can pull from today, from the things that we have seen with our own eyes. Yes, absolutely. I remember Sister Julie sitting and talking with me and telling me that she had told God that she wanted to see Tara stand before the church and testify of the goodness of God. Yes. Testify of the goodness of God. And she lay on her, her deathbed. And they told her many times she was on her deathbed. Yeah. Absolutely. But this one particular time, she lay on her deathbed and they said, she's going to die within the hour. There's, we know this. It's going to happen. And Sister Julie said, no, God. And so she went down to the chapel. And she got on the altar and she said, and she met God at the altar. And she said, no, God. You told me. You told me that she would stand before the church and she would testify that God is a healer. I know what you told me and I'm holding to you exactly what you told me. Amen. Now you gave me a promise and I believe that that promise will be fulfilled. And I'm not going to give up. I am not going to let go. I am holding you to what you said is true. And she said, she's seen the death angel. And she said, no, no, no. I will not have it. I have a promise from God. And she said, she fought that death angel. She said, I fought that death angel. And he was not taken care of because it was not time. Amen. And she said she she prayed and she prayed and she could just feel she could just feel it leave. And she said she went back upstairs and she no more got in Tara's room. And the doctors came in and said we do not know what happened. We do not understand this, but she has taken a turn. We do not. There's no reason. There is no medical reason that she has turned around. But for some reason she has turned around. Amen. She has turned around, and we think she's going to make it. She's going to make it. And I want you to know, she made it up out of that bed of affliction. And I want you to know also, she stood in front of the church and she testified that God is a healer. Sister Terry has went on and met the Lord. But I want you to know, the promise that God made to Sister Julie, He fulfilled. Because what God says He will do, He will do because He's not like a man that He should lie. People want to tell you things to make you feel good. Yeah. 
God's not like that. No. God doesn't give you a promise just to make you feel good. No, we don't. I've heard Brother Pat say about the young lady that wanted a baby, and I know who he's speaking of. She wanted a baby. This child <coughs> didn't need a baby. She couldn't take care of herself, let alone take care of a baby. Amen. I want you to know, she could not even care for herself. She did not have the mental or physical ability to take care of herself. And she wanted a baby. Mm -hmm. And this prophet said, you're going to have a baby. Because she said, I want a baby. And the prophet said, you're going to have a baby. People will tell you what you want to hear. That's right. Do you understand? People will tell you what you want to hear. God will not tell you what you want to hear. God will tell you what you need to hear. And when you are standing and you're saying, Thus saith the Lord God, you better know it's the Lord God. I am very, very quick to check myself before I tell somebody, uh, God said this. Because I want it to be God. It better not be because you want the accolades of men or because you want to give somebody something that they want. Do you understand? Yeah. God doesn't give you everything you want. That's right. But He will give you everything you need. Right. Amen. He will give you everything you need. Amen. We can draw on the things that God has given us today. We can draw on the things that God has given us today. Absolutely. Now, Sister Tara went on to meet the Lord. Yeah. She was very young. <coughs> But she must have been ready. She must have been ready, or she wouldn't have went on. She was ready. Not only that, there weren't a lot of protestations about it. I mean, Julie because, accepted it. Just, it just, be, it just well, because about. her time was there. Yeah. What she, you know what God can accomplish on this earth in one day or in 102 years. God can accomplish whatever He wants to Amen. in a person. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be... You know, we think, oh, well, I mean, I'm living to 102 because I already talked to God about this. <laughs> Unless the rapture comes first, and then I'll go with him and I don't really care. <laughs> That's a standing joke between me and my husband. Who is sick this morning, so we'll say a prayer for him. His stomach is, is not well. Um, and neither is, is Brother Kenny. So say a prayer for them. But I want you to understand, God can accomplish in your life what he wants to see accomplished. We see things totally different. We see things as, why did God take that child at five years old? That makes no sense to me. Why did God take that child at five years Apparently, whatever that child needed to accomplish between the time it was born and the time it went was accomplished. Yeah. I believe that. Because, see, I refuse to give the enemy any power over Amen. me or my children. I refuse to give the enemy power. I believe that we are all appointed a time. There is appointed to all men a time of death. It is. It just is. We don't like that. None of us like that. How many of us like that? If it was up to us, we'd all be living forever, and so would our families. Absolutely. We would never give up. Absolutely. But there is an appointed time. And not until then. Not a single saint of God is going to go before their time. I want you to know and understand that. You hold fast to God. Now, the enemy would try to steal them away. Sure. Sister, Sister Julie was not going to let Tara be stolen away. She said... I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. But you know what? Sometimes we just give up. We just give up. It's too hard. It's too hard to stand. It's too hard to believe. I know my physical self. In my physical self. I, I mean, we suffer a lot of things we don't have to suffer because we don't take the power that we're given. I was reading Brother Roy's book, and I'm telling you, Brother Roy, that book was amazing to me about Azusa Street and the things that they accomplished, the things that they did. And you know what? It's not going today. Because there was an appointed time for that. Absolutely. There was an appointed time uh -huh. for what was going on at that time. Uh -huh. Many people were healed. Many miracles were done. Absolutely. Many things were done. And I remember just a few years down in Florida, they had the same thing going on. It was an amazing revival. People being healed. Miracles happening everywhere. Because somebody believed. Somebody believed. We... We walk so below our abilities and power in God. We really do. Yes. Amen. Most of it, we walk Amen. below the peace that God would give us. Because right. we're going to go through things. It's just a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. 
But God can give you the peace yes. to get through those things. That's the most important thing to grab a hold of. Is to get a hold of Amen. the peace oh. that you can walk through. Yes. I remember, and, and, and Sister Daisy, when, when, when they went out to uh, Branson, Missouri, and, and she had a, a major heart attack, and, and they told Brother Pat and everyone else, there's nothing we can do. It's beyond our control. You know, there isn't anything else we can do. I'm, I'm sorry. And you know, he didn't sit back and say, oh, well, that's, I guess that's just the way it is. I felt sorry for him. He was so tore up about it, you know. Because, <laughs> but what did you walk in? Did you walk in suffering? Did you walk in sorrow? No, no, no. What did you walk in? I told him, I said, look, just do the best you can. God's going to take care of this. Walk in faith. You have to walk in faith. Amen. You have to walk in faith. And I truly believe, had God not seen fit to bring Sister Daisy out of that, Brother Pat would still be sitting here today saying, she accomplished what God wanted her to accomplish. Yeah. My God is good. And we're going to hold fast to what we know is true. Yeah. And Brother Roy's teaching, he says, it's we have it. We God has it in us already. We just don't know how to Get a hold of it. Get exactly. A hold of it. <laughs> and that's what God has just been getting to me. If we could just get a hold of what God truly has for us. Do you, he says, greater things will you do Amen. than I have done. Uh -huh. Greater things will you do than I have done. Now, we have the ability within us, being Holy Ghost filled people, uh -huh. to accomplish more. Yes, amen. More. If we would just walk the walk that we need to. Right. But like I said, sometime, somehow in our humanity, we allow the devil to beat us up. Uh -huh. And I know that seems strange, but it's true. It is true. We need to walk the walk that God wants for oh, us. Hallelujah. But face it, it's just like being a parent. Sometimes it's easier being a parent saying, oh, go ahead, I don't care. I'm just too tired to fight with you anymore. <laughs> How many, how many parents here, honestly, how many parents here, honestly, with your children, knowing it wasn't the best thing for them, said, oh, go ahead, I don't care, just do it. Because it was easier. It was easier. And that's how we are in our walk with God. Sometimes we just sit down because it's easier. And God is saying, Get up, get up. How many of you ever watched Rocky? <laughs> How many of you ever watched Rocky? I remember the first time I saw Rocky. It was such an amazing show. I really, I really loved that show and the, and the fact that he was a nobody that had a vision. He was a nobody that had a vision. He always had it inside of him. It was always there inside of him. He just had to somehow work it out. He had to have, he had to see that vision and put that vision in, and, and put action. He had to put legs on that thing. He had to put boxing gloves on that thing. He had to decide, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to get. And you know what? He didn't just train for a week or two and sit down and say, man, nope. this is too hard. <laughs> you ever see the thing where he runs up the steps? The first time he's running up the steps, it's like, <laughs> he gets to the top and he's like, Oh my gosh. But at the end of the movie, what is he doing? He's doing this. All right. I've got victory. I've made it. That's what God wants to instill in us. Amen. Just because it's hard the first time up the steps, don't give up. Just because it's a little easier the second time around, don't give up. We have a vision set before us. There is a vision set before us, and we have to follow after that vision. Oh, yeah. Amen. We have to work to get to that point. And you have to draw not just from the things that you've seen in this word, but the things that you've seen in your own personal yes, life. Yes, yes. When the doctors came to Brother Pat and said, we have done all that we can do, there's just not that much left that we can do. I'm sorry, you know. We've done everything we can. Yep. And he, trying to console the doctor, because he knows what's inside, says, whatever God wants, I'm believing him for it. Right. Did you not just believe That's God? It. That's it. You just believed I, God. There was something that had a hold of me bigger than me, I'll tell you that. And, and then, then <coughs> my 
that morning, I, I heard him talking to this other doctor in the hallway, and he said, I'll tell you, I don't understand. I, I don't understand what happened here tonight. But he said, that Mrs. Davis, I wouldn't give you a dime for her. But he said, I think she's going to make it. <laughs> she's going to make it. Well, guess what? She's here. How, how many years ago was that, Jason? Ten years. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. And she's still pressing on for God. You know why? Because it wasn't time. No. She still had somewhat to do. Yeah. There were still some things she needed to do for, for God. Day. She had fixed dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do much today. There was someone that only she could touch. There was someone that only she could get through to. There was someone that God had a plan for her to talk to. Amen. I believe that with everything inside of me. Now, the road that we get down the way is totally up to us. Yeah. We can go there dragging and complaining and whining and murmuring. We can get down that road murmuring and complaining. Or we can get down that road saying, I can do all things to Christ Jesus. Is Amen. My Absolutely. God is well able. And when you find yourself in the floor squalling and crying and being a baby because it's not right, it's not just, and I don't understand, that's when you pick yourself up or that's when you call your sister or that's when you call your brother and you say, I need help. I need help. Because we're not in this by ourselves. Sister Daisy said it. Brother Pat said it. Stick with the bunch and you'll not get peeled. <laughs> Stick with the bunch and you'll not get peeled. Amen. We need each other. Yes, we do. We need each other. Yes, indeed. We're not in this by ourselves. No. We always have God, but you always have your brothers and sisters to lean on too. Yes, and sometimes you just need to call and say, I need prayer. You will be surprised the strength that you will get uh -huh. just by having someone agree with you that it's going to be okay. Amen. You don't have to be out there all by... You don't have to be Rocky trying to do it all yourself. That's right. <laughs> Even Rocky had a trainer. Yes. He had a trainer that encouraged him and strengthened him and told him how to do this and how to do that. Yeah. That's what we come together for, that we might get instruction. Amen. That we might be... And I'm telling you what, I don't know about any of you, but I personally have to come to church... Because I need the strength of my brothers and sisters. When I hear somebody stand up and testify about what God has done in their life, that strengthens me. That puts another pole up underneath me that helps me stand a little stronger. That puts another, a, a little bit of foundation that gets me stand a little bit stronger. Because, you know, the world seems to try to wash you away and wash you away and wash you away. And God says, oh, no, let's build this back up. Let's build this back up. We've got to keep our strength built up in God. We need each other. Amen. We need each other. Hallelujah. That's what we're here for. We're not just a building to come to and hear words said out there, sing a couple songs and go, yay, that's good, and walk back out the door. We sing songs that we might be encouraged in God. We come together that we might hear the Word of God and that it might strengthen us and give us faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And how can they hear unless someone preaches it? How can they hear unless... How are you going to know if somebody's not telling you? Amen. How are you going to be encouraged if you don't come together and hear the word? Amen. How are you going to know? I tell you many times, I've flipped on the television and, and, and a, a minister be on and give me the word that I needed to hear. And I thank God for it because I needed it at that time. Amen. God is an on-time God. He's always there for us. Yes, He is. Always. But you've got to reach out to Him. You, you can say all day long, flip that switch, God. Flip that switch. And He's saying, walk over to it. I'm here. Walk over to it. But if you sit on your chair, and this is I'm telling you, I'm guilty of this because I'm telling you, I have such pain in my body and the only thing I can do is just pile cover over cover on top of me until I get so warm and then the pain will go away. Or I fill the tub up with the hottest water that I can and, and just sit in the water because it takes the pain away. And, 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 and I can sit in there and I can complain and gripe or I can say, Lord, I thank you for your mercy and I thank you for your grace and I thank you for yeah. your goodness. But when, when I'm out of church, I feel guilty when I'm not here on Thursday night. 
I feel bad when I'm not here. You know, because I know this is where I'm supposed to be. I need to be in the house of God. I need to hear the word. I need to know that my brothers and sisters are there for me. And it's nice every now and then to have somebody give you a call and say, how you doing? Yeah. I try my best to talk to Brother Ronnie at least once a week. Yeah. I do. I try my best to, to talk to him. Sometimes he'll call me. Sometimes I'll call him. You know, because we need the encouraging words of our brothers and sisters. We really do. <coughs> we need that connection. Don't just pull from the things of the past, but pull from what you've seen with your own Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. <coughs> because those things encourage you. You, know, you can tell the world all about Abraham, and you can tell the world all about Enoch, and you can tell the world all about David, and you can tell the world all about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can tell the world all about Daniel. You can tell the world all about Nebuchadnezzar. You can tell the world all about these people, and it means nothing to them. But when you tell God, my pastor's wife was laying in the hospital, and he, she was literally dying, and the doctor said, there's no hope. And I want you to know miraculously overnight she changed things changed and she made it and that was 10 years ago and she's still going today absolutely when you start telling people of the things that you've seen that you know with your own heart you've seen it that's what makes changes when you testify of things that's happened in your life faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen People may not see it with their eyes, but they're going to see it in your life. They're going to see it in your walk. They're going to see it and hear it in your talk. Absolutely. When you tell them of the glory and the goodness of God and what He's capable of doing and what you have seen yourself, that encourages them. Yes, yes. That gives them hope. Well, we've got a very special thing in this little church here. We seem to have such a connection. This is just what we're talking about. I have seen miracles since I belonged this country. We just one this week. He's a friend of mine. His name is Jerry Arthur. He had a kidney removed. He had cancer. Two strokes. The doctors said the same thing. We've been praying for him. You, you, you've heard me say, please uh, keep your eyes on Jerry Arthur. Did they come into his room? He's miraculously. On the men, they, they, medicine, medicine cannot figure it out. One day, maybe someday, medicine will really know who is the great healer. Amen. And there are many, there are many doctors out there that do know that it's not them; it's God. And there are some out there that think if you're not healed, it's because they didn't do something. <laughs> it happens right. It's, here. It has nothing to do with man. They have the ability because God gave them the understanding. This is a hospital Amen. of a soul of our souls, this place that we're sitting in right now. Oh, I absolutely believe this. I absolutely believe this. We come together that we might hear from God. Yeah. You know, when I got saved and baptized, I got the Holy Ghost, and I was at work, you know. And I was working, a lady came out to me, she was, Dale, I want what you have. I didn't know what she was talking about, you know. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, you know, what are you talking about? She goes, I look at you and I just see a bright light and I see peace. You know, I'm, you know, it just dawned on me at that time. These astronauts have seen a space from Las Vegas. You know, what happened with everybody that had the Holy Ghost stood together? What kind of light would they see? Amen. They, oh, my. They would make a look at the light, wouldn't they? Amen. You know, it just made me feel good that someone noticed, you know, the glow coming off of me at that time. You, you, know? you can see the, the presence of God in the lives of His children. Yeah. Yes. Last night, the lady at work, she, Tells me she's an atheist, she's proud to be an atheist. And I caught her last night, she said, God dang it. I looked at her, I said, Who are you asking to dang that? <laughs> said, what? I said, Who are you asking to dang that? You're an atheist, you don't believe in God. <laughs> well, that's a figure of speech. I said, So if I say your mother smells like a dog, that's a figure of speech too. Oh. <laughs> she goes, What? I said, Does that offend you? She goes, yeah. I said, well, it offends me when you talk about my God. She goes, don't do it again. <laughs> she goes, okay, don't talk about my mother. I won't talk about your God. <laughs> Challenge him. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are not seen were made of things which do appear. 
Do you understand? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. The Word of God. That's how important this Word of God is. That's why it's so important that the Word of God come out of our mouth. That's why it's important that we stand on the Word of God. When you know the Word of God, you can stand on the Word of God. When you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can stand because you know He's true. Yes. If you don't really know Him, how can you stand on His Word? You, God wants us to know Him in a most personal, personal way. Amen. He is our Savior. We have trials, we have troubles. But, oh, I'm so glad I have a Savior. Amen. I have a Savior. I have a positive influence will get me through all the negative things Amen. in my life. Amen. Yes, He will. Amen. I have a positive influence that's going to get me through yes. all the negative in my life. And I'm so glad Hallelujah. that he doesn't give up on me and he doesn't say, I'm so tired of your whining. All you ever do is whine. He says, honey, I love you. And your whining is getting a little bit irritating. You need to change some things. And then, he's, then I say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We have to stop whining. Hmm? What you need to say, baby? I want you to pray for me. I've been in the hospital. Pray for me about my Caesar. Yes, ma'am. We are, honey. We're doing that, baby. I love you, all of you. Oh, I, we know you. We love you, too. We love love you too. Amen. And we are praying that God would restore you, that God would completely restore you. Uh -huh and deliver you from the things Amen. that are upon your body. Amen. And I believe God is well able to restore you completely to hope in all things. Absolutely. God is good, and His hand is not short, no. and He's not like a man that He would lie. Absolutely. If God has given you, I'm not telling you if man has given you a promise, because like I told you before, men will lie to you. Absolutely. Men will tell you what you want to hear. The Word of God says that in times, they'll go about having itching ears, Wanting to hear what they want to hear. Uh -huh. The world will tell you, you can do anything you want to do. You can go anywhere you want to go. If it feels good, it must be okay. I'm sorry, that's not what the no, Word of God says. Right. We have to line up to the Word of God. Right. We have to line up to the Word of God. And when you line up to the Word of God, it's not because He's out there with a bull whip, whipping, trying to whip you into shape. I don't know about you, but God never beats me down. God talks to me in a loving manner and says, Listen, honey, you can do better than this. You can do this. I know you can. Because remember my word. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Who me. Remember the word. Stand on the word. If we would just stand on the word, if we would just stand on the word and speak these things, speaking things that are not as though they were, so that we might see them come to pass. You don't see those things, but you speak those things because you know God is well able to supply them. I pray every day, Lord Jesus, touch Ronnie and touch Judy and touch Sheila and touch Sister Jill and Brother Bud because those are the top of my list right now. Those seem to be the top of my list right now. And I can't pray with, for Ronnie without praying for Judy. No, You cannot pray for Ronnie without praying for Judy. That's right. Because I want you to understand, the Bible says that when you're married, you are no longer two, but you are one flesh. Amen. And I truly believe that all the pain that he is enduring and going through, she's going through the same thing. So when you're remembering Brother Ronnie, don't ever exclude Sister Judy. Because I want you to know and understand, she is equally going through all that he's going through. Absolutely. And then, they, not only this are they going through with Brother Ronnie, but they have a child that's going through this. So the enemy is trying everything to stop them. Amen. He will throw every crook in the road he can, Sister Judy. But we serve a God that is able to deliver all, right. all of us. Yeah, able to keep us. His peace is what's going to get you through this, honey. Right. His peace. And I know you have that peace. I know you do. But you're still walking around in flesh, baby, and I know it hurts. You know, I know in the flesh we hurt. We stand in our spirit and we trust God and we believe God. <coughs> so we have to remember these people. By faith. By faith. You have to stand on what you know is true. Things are going to come at us. But by faith, we're going to make it through. Speaking into existence, things that are not, so that we might see them come to pass. And I can't remember exactly where that scripture is at, exactly how it's quoted. But I do know that what I speak, 
And what I say with my mouth makes a difference in God. Yes, it does. It makes a difference in God. We can speak positive things into our life and we can say, by His stripes we are healed. And we can fight and fight and fight. Because I'm telling you, it is a fight with the enemy. He's never going to go away. He has no control over my life, don't get me wrong. The enemy does not control my life. Amen. But he does try to throw a little wrench in there every now and then and mess things up. It's like a wrong line. It's like you can do it of hour. You know the good thing is? God's already pulled his teeth. <laughs> I've heard Brother Ronnie say that a hundred times. Yeah. He says he's like a lion. And yeah, he's out there and he tries to scare us and he puts things upon us and he tries to try to destroy us. And we have to remind him, roar all you want, lion, because you've got no teeth. When Jesus died on the cross, when he rose again, his power, the enemy's power, was taken away. And that's what we just have to continually remind him of. You have no power. Your power has been taken away. We walk in the, in, in the spirit and in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We walk with him. I thank him today. I praise him today. And this may not have helped anybody. But it has helped me today to know that we are all flesh and we all have weaknesses. But by his grace we stand another day. By his grace... He will encourage and strengthen us another day. I just thank you. have to bring our flesh under subjection. Sometimes it's real hard to do. Sometimes we have to smack it around a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Brother Tony, what did your class do this morning? We got into Bible study as two. Why none of us look the same? Why every one of us different? And some of the kids had some off the wall ideas. It all came to the came to the point that the whole reason God made us different is what if we as people all look the same, all acted the same, this would be a very boring world. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I say amen to that. They're praying for Sister Teresa back there. If you'd like to join them, and yes, she's right sitting there in your seat. Uh, uh, you you way, uh, oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let's see. <laughs> One of these days, uh, 
We're going to start having a bulletin again. I think Sister Lisa has uh, updated the website, uh, our uh, church website. So a lot of times if you need to know something that's going on, you can check with it. Um, help me, Sister Wendy. What have we got going on? Next Saturday we play at Harrison Street Cafe again. 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, then, oh yes, Eternals are here tonight. Um, uh, if you've never heard the Eternals, you will truly enjoy them. They are uh, many years. They're just really absolutely. So, as uh, yeah, March third, and our fellowship meeting will be here this month, and that will be the. Last Saturday, last Saturday of the month. I, can't remember. I don't know what the date is. No yeah. But anyway, so remember those things. 20, 20, 20, 27, 26, somewhere in that somewhere area. In that area. Um, I don't have it with me. I'm not sure, Sister Judy, who is... Jerry. Oh, Jerry is... You're speaking this morning, Jerry? Yes, birthdays. birthdays. Oh, birthdays and anniversary. I told you I'm not used to doing this job anymore. I used to do it all, all the time. And then Sister June. And we have a birthday? Yes. Who's got a birthday? Bailey. Bailey has a birthday. Sister Bailey has a birthday. take away from what Jennifer said this morning. Because that needs to soak into our heart yeah. and our understanding. Because those words were spirit and they were life. And if you'll receive it, it the enemy's out to destroy everyone in here. And he's not yeah. going to stop. It's only going to, it's going to wax worse and worse. And you have two choices. You can get stronger or you can fall by the wayside. Right. Now, God would have us to be stronger. Amen. God would have us to stand. But there's you're not going to stand. You're not going to stand in your power. And you're not going to stand in the world's power. The only way you're going to stand is in God's power. And God gave us His Word. And God gave us His Spirit for two reasons. Because His Word is true. His Word is the truth. And it will make you stand. And His Spirit will open up the truth to you. And it will make you able to be victorious no matter what comes your way. Because things will come your way. It's how you deal with it. That's right. And, and I just want to say this and I'll get out of the way. She was talking about turning off and turning on the power. Do you know that there's power in these walls 24 7 There's always power in these walls. The power never goes away. And there's power to do what? What's a, anything. Anything you bring in here that, that needs power there's power here to do it. My camera, these microphones, these instruments, the furnace, but there's a secret to the power. There's a secret to the power here. It's always available, but you got to plug into it. Now, enemy don't want you to plug into the power. 
Come on. And if you are plugged into the power, you can plug on Friday. And I found out several years ago, I fell out of church tonight because things come my way and I struggled with it and it pushed me out. And I discovered one of the greatest secrets of my spiritual walk. When things come your way, they can push you out or you can make it push you further in. Amen. You have to be determined. You can't just not whatever comes your way, do whatever you want. It wants to you. That's right. You have to say, I am going to plug into God and I am going to stay plugged into God because nothing can separate us from the love of God but us. And if you say, I won't get separated, if you say, I'm determined to go to church, if you say, nothing's going to stand in my way, nothing's going to stop me, Amen. then this word backs you up. Amen. You're standing on solid ground. Amen. And you will prevail. Amen. It's all in Him. Amen. And how much of Him we make in us. Uh -huh. It's all in Him. I love Him today. Yeah. It's amazing. A lot of, a lot of, some of you may not know this. This guy comes to this church and you he don't hear half what's going on. He can't hardly hear a thing. Then he comes in anyhow. And he still hears from God. I know him so much. There's so, so many reasons why he, he'd say, well, I might as well not even go. I can't even hear what's going on. But he's determined. Yeah. Stick with the bunch. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Stay with the bunch. It takes determination. My pastor used to take it takes glee, guts, and glue to go through this. <laughs> you gotta have a little glee. You gotta get heavy once in a while. Yeah. If you don't, you'll die in your own misery. You gotta have some guts because you're gonna face a lot of things that you don't want to face. And you gotta have some glue. That's called stick to it in this. That means that what you started, you determined I'm gonna finish this thing. Amen. I preached a funeral the other day, and it's uh, is in the Means family. And I was talking about Ray Jean, and of course he, he just died not all that long ago, Ray Jean Means. Been a minister for many, many years. And I told about how I remember back as a young lad, and I was so in love with Jesus, and I just couldn't get enough, and I went from, I'd go to my own church every night they had it, and I was somewhere else in a, and another church almost every night. I went to church almost every night. I mean, I was so in love with Jesus, I couldn't get enough of it. And I went over here to Brother Potter's church on Friday night. They had a young people's group. And I went over there, and Ray Jean was there that night. He hadn't been saved all that long, I don't think. Right around about the same time I did. And as we were going home, we were, we were walking along. And I remember we were just hot putting us. You know, we just, cause we got talking, and we was anointed, we was happy, we was full of the Holy Ghost. And I mean, we were stepping it off. And Brother Ray Jean said to me, he said, Brother Pat, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of things in my life that I've started and didn't finish. But by the grace of God, this is one thing I'm going to finish. All right. This is the one thing I started I was going through. All right. I don't care what Satan tries, he can't stop me. I'm going through. And just not very long ago, they put him in the ground. I got news for you. He was still preaching the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And oh, yeah, he had a big family. And he had a strength struggles just like you. He had sickness to contend with. He had uh, things wrong in his private life. Brother, he made it through because he determined. And for me and my house, we're going to serve God. All right. You can do what you want to, old world, but we're going to live for the Lord. And somewhere you've got to get off the fence and you've got to make that commitment. Somebody was talking to me last night, I think it was Brother Billy Record talking about Sister Julie. He just recently discovered Sister Julie. What a wonderful lady. And I thought about all the nights that she sat in the hospital with Sister Tara, and how many operations that kid had. Beautiful young girl. To look at her, you wouldn't think there's a thing wrong with her. And just a mess inside. Just had everything. I think something like 68 operations. I mean, I don't know how many she went through. It was just awful. Just something like she lived half her life and then died at a very young age. And But she went out praising God and she went out full of the Holy Ghost. She went out believing the Lord. Amen. I don't understand all that. That's what I'm saying. We'll understand it better by and by. Mm -hmm. But Billy was talking about her, and he said, man, I'll tell you, that girl's got it. I said, I'm going to tell you something, Billy.
When I met that girl, she was a mess. Her life was a mess. There wasn't no more stability in her life than a man in the moon. She didn't know from one day to the next what she's going to do. And she come to church till she got in a conviction real bad, and she stayed away a while. And then, and, and of course, she's all had problems with drugs and all kinds of things. She'd tell you everything I'm telling you. Her life was an absolute mess. And she'd come to church, and she'd come real regular until things got too hot for her, and then she'd kind of back off again. And then when she did, next thing I knew, she's in a mess again. And one night I preached a message here, and I preached the message about getting off of the fence. Somewhere you've got to get off the fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If God be God, let's serve God. All right. Somewhere along the line, you have to make the declaration. Amen. I've fooled around long enough. I'm going to, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. All right. And I preached that message. And I mean, God really used me that night. I was really annoyed and I preached that message. And she come to me and she said, Brother Pat, I heard the message tonight that I needed to hear all these years. And by the grace of God, I'm getting over the fence. And I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to tell you what, she hit the ground running and she ain't stopped yet. Right. She's still going 90 miles an hour. Right. Got it. Full of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, she preaches to the president. She, she's on fire, brother. Hallelujah. Because she made that decision back Thank you, Lord. there. And I praise the Lord she did. And there's others that's, that's on that fence that needs to make that decision. And you're not going to get anywhere until somewhere on the line you make that declaration. Let me tell you something I found out. The devil will do everything to try to get you from making that kind of a commitment. But when you make that commitment and you voice that commitment, all the things begin to come together that make that possible for you. Something miraculous happens when you make that commitment. All those things that you're not able to do, God makes it possible for you to do. He gives you the power. He gives you the strength. He gives you the desire. He gives you the commitment. Once you stand and make that declaration. All right. Amen. Amen. I pray for those that need to make that move. We have some in our, in our midst today that need somehow to make that commitment. You've got to do it. You have no other choice. You've got to make it. Amen. This is not a, this is not a play thing. That's it's right. not something we just do long as we feel like it. So he was, I'll come to church if I get the feeling like it. Mm -hmm. But the devil see to it you don't get the feeling like it. He'll see to you get the feeling like doing everything else. I'm going to tell you something. There's many a time I stand here and I don't feel like it. There's many a time I push on when I don't feel like it. But I'll tell you one thing. I know one thing. I know where I'm headed. I know where I've been and I know where I'm going. All right. And my mind's clear. How did, and my mind's made up. And I got my foot on the rock and my mind made up. Right. Amen. I'm telling you, saints, we can make it. We can do That's this, right. man. If you determine in your heart, for as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. All right. I remember when you heard uh, Sister Daisy tell this when Sister, Brother Kevin Dyer came, uh, when they came to this church, and Brother Kevin, we'd known Kevin since he was a young kid when I pastored a church in uh, in Brooklyn, Indiana. And, uh, and, and Brother Kevin and, and Sister Teresa's marriage was on the rocks. It was on the rocks. And I hadn't seen him for quite a while. And first, the first Sunday, Sister Teresa came to church. But she's by herself, and she was never by herself. And I said, honey, what are you doing? Well, she began to tell me, me and Kevin, we're going to get a divorce. And uh, the next thing I know, she's in the altar. And, 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 but, and she didn't come back that next week. But then the next week, uh, uh, Kevin came And he, he cried on my shoulder a little bit. My marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> And the next Sunday, they came together. Oh. But I remember Kevin in that altar, and Daisy got down beside Kevin and said, I'm going to tell you something. If you're doing this, just get Teresa back. You're doing this for the wrong reason. Yes. I'm going to tell you that right now. You need this because you need this. That's right. if, you, if you and uh, uh, Teresa never live again another day, you still need God. Amen. You still got to serve God. Amen. And the next week, Kevin and her came together. And they came to that altar together. And God restored that marriage. You right. see Kevin, he's a man in motion. He's still, he's still running just as hard as he can go to God. And God has blessed the marriage. And he's put them back together. And he's healed the land. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And I thank God. See, and, and what he's done for others, he'll do for you. That's right. Thank you, Lord. God is no respecter of persons. He wants us all to make it. All right. Don't you love the Lord today? Right, so I thank Him because He is a God of grace and a God of mercy. Amen. He loves us all. Amen. He's not against anybody today. He's not your opponent. 
Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All, right. <laughs> all our sins and griefs to bear. Uh, amen. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I do love Him today. Let's all stand That's today. Good. Amen. Brother Rob, would you uh, dismiss us today? Father, I just thank you so much, Lord, for thank your you, words. Jesus. Father, for the Spirit that moved amongst us today. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for taking the Word and applying it to each of our hearts. Father, in a way that only you can. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for conviction, Father, upon those that need conviction. I thank you, Father, for growing those that need to grow. Father, those that are willing and want to surrender to you. And Father, I just give you praise and glory for what you're doing amongst us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen.